In this question, we need to find out the maximum value of this expression. To find the maximum value of this expression, first we need to solve and simplify this expression as much as possible and then eventually talk about the maximum value or range of this expression. Okay, so let's get started. Here is our expression. And if we carefully observe the expression which is inside the square root, this expression is nothing but cos 6 minus 5 whole square. Isn't it? And there is a square root involved in this expression and this is plus 3. So, this is our required expression. But, so there is a square root and there is a square over here. And we already know that square root of x square is what? Modulus of x. Please don't forget this. So, I am going to write modulus of cos 6 minus 5 plus 3. And we are interested in what? Maximum value of this particular expression. Okay. So, let's now talk about cos 6. We will start with cos 6. And then we will find out the range of cos 6 minus 5. And then we will find out the range of modulus cos 6 minus 5. And eventually modulus cos 6 minus 5 plus 3. Okay. So, we already know that the range of cos 6 is minus 1 close to 1 close. Isn't it? But here we are interested in the range of cos 6 minus 5. Isn't it? So why not subtract 5 from all the sides of this inequality? If we do that, we are going to get minus 1 minus 5 less than or equals to cos 6 minus 5 less than or equals to 1 minus 5. Isn't it? We have just subtracted minus 5 from all the sides of this inequality. Now, this will be minus 6, this will be cos 6 minus 5 and this will be minus 4. So, cos 6 minus 5 lies between minus 6 close to minus 4 close, isn't it? That gives me any expression which is lying between this particular interval. And we want modulus of this particular expression, isn't it? We want modulus cos 6 minus 5. That means we need to take modulus of all the values. If we take modulus of all the values, now the expression this expression, modulus of this expression will lie between 4 close to 6 close, isn't it? So, I am going to write cos 6 minus 5 lies between what? It should be greater than or equals to 4, but less than or equals to 6, isn't it? So, we have just taken modulus of all the values lying between this region, minus 6 to minus 4. If we take modulus, what I am going to get is this, 4 to 6. That means the expression is greater than or equals to 4, but less than or equals to 6, okay? Now, we just need to add 3 to every side of this inequality to get this particular expression or this expression. Both are same. So, here if I add 3, I am going to get 9 greater than or equals to modulus cos 6 minus 5 plus 3 greater than or equals to 7. That means the expression lies between 7 close to 9 close. So, the maximum value of this expression is what? 9. Because the expression lying between what? 7 close to 9 close. So, maximum value will be nothing but option B, 9. Got it? In this question, we need to find out the range of A for which this function is defined for every real values of x. So, let's start defining this function. As we can see, there are three logs involved. And whenever we see logarithm, what do we do? We take out the expression which is inside the logarithm and make it positive. So, the very first logarithm is this and the whole expression which is inside the logarithm should be what? Positive just like this. Okay. But wait, I can again see another logarithm. This is another logarithm and this is the expression which is inside the logarithm, logarithm isn't it? So, this expression should always be positive. So, let us make it positive just like this. Log sin x plus a to the base 7 is greater than 0. But again, I can see another logarithm as well. This is the another logarithm, the third logarithm. And we have another expression which is inside the logarithm. So, this sin x plus a should also be positive. Okay. Let's now talk about this inequality. We just need to solve all the three inequalities for all values of x belongs to R. The, these three inequalities are true for every real x and we need to get the value of A, the range of value of A, okay. So, let's now talk about the inequality number 1, okay. So, I am going to replace this 0 by log 1 to the base same as this base 1 by 3, okay. 
So log 1, we already know log 1 to the base b is equals to 0 where base is not equals to 1 and base is greater than 0. We already know this. Now, now I can clearly see there is logarithm on both the sides of inequality and there is a base involved which is less than 1. What happens to the logarithm inequality when base is less than 1? We can remove the log from both the sides but we are going to reverse the sign of inequality. Isn't it? So this is greater than symbol. I'm going to write less than symbol. And I'm going to write this expression which is log sin x plus 8 to the base 7 and this expression which is inside this log that is 1. Now we just need to solve this inequality. To solve this inequality I'm going to replace this one by what? Log 7 to the base 7 you already know this log b to the base b is equals to what? 1 where b is greater than 0 and b is not equals to 1. Isn't it? So this log 7 to the base 7 is on the right hand side. Now this base is greater than 1. Isn't it? When base is greater than 1 we can remove log from the from both the sides such that we are going to get sin x plus a less than. See we are not changing the sign of inequality because base is greater than 1 and I am going to write here just 7. So this is the final inequality of part number 1 and this inequality is true for every x belongs to our as per the question. Okay, let's now talk about inequality number 2. Inequality number 2 says log sin x plus 8 to the base 7 is greater than 0. I am going to replace this 0 by what? Log 1 to the base this 7. Now base is greater than 1. Let's remove log from the both the sides so that I will get what? Sin x plus a greater than 1. Inequality sign is not getting reversed. So this is our second inequality which is also true for every x belongs to r. Now sin x plus a is greater than 1 and third inequality says sin x plus a is greater than 0. If something is greater than 1, it is anyway going to be greater than 0, isn't it? So I am going to remove this inequality. This is useless inequality. Okay, so we are getting two inequalities sin x plus a is less than 7 but is greater than 1 for every x belongs to R. Let's talk about this inequality and this inequality separately such that 1 is or rather sin x plus a is greater than 1 and sin x plus a is less than 7. Okay, let's talk about this. If I talk about this, this gives me a is greater than what? 1 minus sin x. And here a is less than 7 minus sin x. Okay. So we already know that the sin x, the range of sin x is minus 1 close to 1 close, isn't it? So let's talk about the range of 1 minus sin x to get the value of a. So here the range of 1 minus sin x, if I substitute sin x as 1, what I'm going to get is a 0. If I substitute sin x as minus 1, what I'm going to get is a 2. So here the range will be 0 to 2. A should be greater than something which lies between 0 close to 2 close. Isn't it? A should be greater than something always. Don't forget this. This is true for all, every x belongs to real. So A should be greater than always this interval. So safe side, we are going to take this. A should be greater than 2. If A is greater than 2, then no matter what the RHS of this inequality is, this inequality will hold true. Isn't it? So A should be greater than 2 is what we are get, getting from this inequality. Let's now talk about this. So here we know the range of sin x minus 1 to 1. 7 minus sin x is what? If I substitute sin x equals to 1, I'm going to get 6. Sin x equals to minus 1, I'm going to get 8. Okay. So A should be less than some expression whose values lies between 6 to 8 both sides included, isn't it? So A should be less than this particular thing always. Let's not talk, forget this always. Since A should be less than this always, A should be less than the minimum value of this expression which is 6. So if A is less than 6, then no matter what value of RHS you put, 6, 6 point something, 8, 7, 7 point something, anything you're going to put, a should be a is less than 6. This inequality will hold true for every expression, for every value of this expression. Okay. So, what we are getting from this, these two inequality, a should be greater than 2 but less than 6. This gives me a as 
2 to 6. A belongs to what? 2 to 6. Isn't it? So, option A is the absolutely correct option. In this question, we need to determine the period of this particular curve, which is y is equals to sine 4x. So, the idea is to plot the graph of sin x first and then we will shrink this graph horizontally four times to get the graph of sin 4x. Okay, so let's begin. Let's plot the graph of sin x first. So, we do know that the graph of sin x looks like this. So, this is pi. This is pi by 2. At pi by 2, I will be getting a 1. At pi, I will be getting what? 0. And at 2 pi, I will be getting a 0. And here, 3 pi by 2, I will be getting a minus 1. Let's join the points. Sin 0 is 0. Sin pi by 2 is 1. Sin pi is again 0. Sin 3 pi by 2 is what? Minus 1. And then, sin 2 pi is back to 0. Yes? Now, we need to shrink this graph. Shrink this graph four times horizontally horizontally to get the graph of sin 4x. If I do that, what do I get? This graph. Now, this is the shrinked graph of sin x four times such that this looks like a graph of sin 4x. Now, if I carefully observe this graph, from 0 to pi by 2, it completes one cycle. Isn't it? That means the period of this function is what? Pi by 2. Now, there is one more method to calculate the period of this function. And the method is, if you know the period of f of x, let's say this is t, then the period of f of ax will be t by modulus a. Yes? So, we do know that the period of sin x is 2 pi. So, the period of sin of 4x will be what? 2 pi by modulus 4, that is pi by 2. Yes? Easy method, shortcut. Yes. Now, let's figure out which of the following options are correct. Since this is a multi-select question, so more than one option can be correct. So, we need to go one by one. Option A says, e raised to power ln square root of pi square by 4. Now, e raised to power ln of something is nothing but that something only. Yes, and this is nothing but pi by 2. That means option A is absolutely correct. Let's talk about e raised to power ln modulus pi by 4. Again, this is what? Modulus pi by 4. That gives me pi by 4. Okay, that means option B is not correct. Okay, let's talk about option C. Says e raised to power half ln pi square by 16. Now, e raised to power half ln. This half can go in the power of pi square by 16. So, I'll be left with e raised to power ln pi by 16, pi square by 16 raised to power half. Yes, now this value will be equal to what? Pi by 16 or pi square by 16 raised to power half. And this will be equal to what? Pi by 4. Okay, that means C option is also incorrect. Let's talk about the period of cos 4x. So, let, to calculate the period of cos 4x, we need to know the period of cos x. And we do know that the period of cos x is what? 2 pi. That simply means that the period of cos 4x will be what? 2 pi by modulus 4, which is equals to pi by 2, which matches with exactly r pi by 2. That means A and D are the correct answers for this particular question. Okay. In this question, we need to find out the number of integral values of A that satisfy this particular equation. If we carefully observe this equation, this equation involves sin x. Isn't it? And we already know that sin x, the range of sin x is minus 1 close to 1 close. Isn't it? So, what we are going to do, we are going to calculate the value of sin x in terms of k and then we'll apply this condition. Okay. So, let's do that. Here, I'm going to get 8 sin x is equals to 2k minus 3. That means sin x is equals to 2k minus 3 upon 8. So, here if we know that sin x is between minus 1 to 1 and if this particular equation holds true, that gives me what? 2k minus 3 whole upon 8 is this between minus 1 and 1 as well. Isn't it? Now, let's multiply 8 in this inequality. I'm going to get what? Minus 8 less than or equals to 2k minus 3 less than or equals to 8. And if we add 3 on all the sides of inequality, what I'm going to get is minus 5 less than or equals to 2k and less than or equals to 11 that gives me k is between minus 5 by 2 to 11 by 2 both sides included that gives me what 
k belongs to minus 2.5 this value and minus 2.5 to 5.5 both sides included now we are interested in what number of integral values of k so we just need to figure out what are the integral integral values of a between this interval so k can be equals to minus 2 in this interval minus 2 exists minus 1 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so how many values are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so the final answer of this particular question is what 8